Well, Indiana is a state that many years ago used to be a state of mostly forests. Prior to settlement of Europeans here, we were about 85% forested across the state. And after Europeans got here, they were really interested in making farmland and open land for pastures. And so a lot of our forests were, were cut and harvested and turned into farmlands and, and uh, croplands and pasture lands. But with time, some of, that, some of that land grew back into trees. And now about 20% of our, for, our state is in forest land. So we've got a wonderful resource that's really important to us. Uh, there's a variety of ways that it's important to us. And one of the ways is that the things that individual trees do. So trees benefit us in a variety of ways. They provide us with oxygen. And so in the process of a tree growing, it's actually producing both oxygen and clean water out of its leaves. And they also absorb carbon dioxide. And so that's actually taking something out of the air that we're producing whenever we burn fossil fuels or any number of products. And that can be really beneficial for us. And they produce wood. And so wood is a fantastic material that we utilize for a lot of different things. We're going to talk about that a little bit here in just a few moments. So wood is about 50% carbon. So when trees absorb carbon, they're pulling that out of the atmosphere and actually putting it into the wood that they grow every year. And a tree grows a new ring of wood every growing season. So in every spring and summer, trees start producing new wood. And we're going to take a look at that process. So we've taken a cross section of a walnut tree here to show you how trees grow. So trees will add a ring of growth every year just inside the bark. And that happens every year that the tree is growing. So as the tree gets larger, it's actually adding more wood every year. And if it's a tree that's got a nice big crown of a lot of leaves, it can actually grow a little bit more wood than a tree that has just a few leaves and is crowded by a bunch of other trees around it. And I want to demonstrate that to you too. So I've got two slices of wood here that have grown at very different rates. So the, the, this side here has grown quite slowly and you can see that the growth rings the wood that's been added every year on this tree are a lot closer together. That means that tree was growing much more slowly than this tree here, which has growth rings that are much further apart. It's added a lot more wood every year that it's grown. And that's one of the basic principles that we work with in forestry. If we want a tree to grow faster, what we do is we do some thinning around that tree, just like you might weed in your garden. You would thin out the carrots that you planted to get bigger carrots. We thin out trees in the forest to provide more growth for the trees that we leave behind. So that's one of the things that we're doing in forestry all the time is thinking about what trees we want to grow and how we can help them grow. And we help them grow by giving them more space and more sunlight. Now, how does a tree grow? Well, a tree has, right inside this bark area, a zone called cambium. And that is where all the new cells are created that produce the growth ring every year and also produce new bark every year. And as a tree gets older and older, it starts changing some of the wood that's inside the tree. So we have this sapwood zone that is the newest wood on the tree, and we have this heartwood zone that's the older wood. And a lot of times in several species of trees, including things like black walnut, we see this color change. And it's a change in chemicals and storage materials that are put into the tree that give it that different color. And that different color is also what makes it really attractive for folks that want to build really beautiful things out of wood. So in Indiana, we are really well known for hardwoods. And these are trees that drop their leaves in the fall. And they produce, in many species, some really beautiful woods. And so we're thinking about things like black walnut, which we see here, or black cherry, which is kind of a reddish brown color, or the oaks, which have a really pretty grain, or things like maple that are really light colored. I mean, you can almost not see the grain in it. So there's lots of variety of different types of woods we can utilize for different purposes. So in your homes, if you've got kitchen tables, 
or wooden cabinets or maybe hardwood floors, there's a good chance that some of that wood actually came from trees right here in Indiana and was made in Indiana lumber mills and manufactured in Indiana furniture and cabinet making facilities. So we've got a lot of folks working right here in Indiana with the trees that we grow in our forests. So in Indiana, we have a lot of different products that come from trees. And one of them that you might not have thought about is maple syrup. So usually in February, there's folks out on the countryside that are finding their maple trees and they're putting what we call taps in those trees. And it's a little metal tube that allows the sap to drip out into a bucket or bag. And they'll collect that sap and start boiling it. And they need about 40 to 60 gallons of sap just to make one gallon of maple syrup. And so it means a lot of firewood burning too. So I know a couple of my friends that have actually boiled all night to make their maple syrup from all the sap they've collected over a day or two. So it's a big job, but the end result is they get this delicious maple syrup. We also have uh, a variety of wood products that we can utilize from trees that we harvest in the state of Indiana. Uh, we've talked about cabinets and furniture and flooring, but you might not think about things like baseball bats or tennis rackets. Uh, and the other thing that we get from trees is paper products. And so everything from your notebooks to the toilet paper is coming from trees. Very important for us. The ba uh, boxes and bags that we get things delivered to us from a variety of stores. Uh, that's all paper packaging material. So really important products. You might not also think about some other food items, uh, and that's nuts. So we've got quite a few trees here in Indiana that will produce nuts that we can utilize and eat. This is black walnut, and it's a lot of work to get the nut meats out of black walnut, but they're really tasty. We also have pecans here in Indiana and hazelnuts. Uh, we have fruit like persimmons and wild plums and wild crab apples. So all different types of food items that we can actually get from trees. And in fact, if you've ever smoked some meat or barbecued, you may have had some Indiana hickory or oak on your smoker for giving that wonderful flavor. But we're not the only ones eating fruit and nuts. So our forests are also a really important habitat for wildlife. I've got a wild turkey feather here. Now this is one of the many species of wildlife that depend on our forest areas for their survival. And so it's important for us to have forests and trees available for the wildlife habitat that all these different species need. And the interesting thing is, a lot of these species need different kinds and ages of forest. And so really big old forests are beneficial for a variety of bird species and animals. But we also need some really young forest areas for things like rough grouse and a little bird called the yellow-breasted chat. Uh, and a variety of other species that you might recognize or may have never heard of, something like the whippoorwill. So some of you folks living in southern Indiana, you may have heard of whippoorwill, but for a lot of people in Indiana, they've never heard one. And that's because we need areas of young forest as well as big old forest to support their populations. So our forests are important not just to us, but to everything else that's living here in Indiana. In Indiana, our forest is a forest of hardwood trees. And that means it's a forest of trees that loses its leaves in the fall and then grows them back every spring. And we find them in the summer, uh, nice and green, and then they turn colors in the fall. And that color change is actually because a compound that makes the leaves green in summer, chlorophyll, is breaking down in the fall. As our days get shorter, as our nights get cooler, that chlorophyll starts to degrade. And as it degrades, it actually exposes pigments or colors in the leaves that were there all the time, but we didn't see. Things like yellows and some of the oranges. And then there's another pigment, anthocyanin, that gives us the reds and purples, and that's actually produced in the fall when we have really sunny days and cool nights. And so we can get that beautiful fall color from our native hardwood trees, depending on the weather and the season. And a lot of people think frost is what brings it, but in fact, it's not. It's more related to the day length. And if we get a hard freeze, it can actually be really hard on our leaves and they'll fall quicker. So in many cases, our best fall color comes when we have a kind of mild fall with really sunny days. We can get those beautiful colors on a lot of our trees. Now, a lot of folks think about forests as primarily conifers, 
the trees with needles that are evergreen. And we will certainly find conifers here in Indiana, but in many cases they've been planted in plantations on places where we've had soil erosion in the past from old farming practices. Or they've been planted for things like windbreaks or for shade. And those are great purposes, but we've got to remember that most of our native forest is really those hardwood tree species. So conifers are a very small part of our forest environment as it naturally existed. Now, we've talked a lot about forest products, and you may be wondering, well, we've got to cut trees down to make some of those products. Isn't that a problem? And in truth, it really isn't. Right here in Indiana, we have been gaining acreage in forests for the past 40 to 50 years. We've actually gone from about a million and a half acres around 1900 to about 5 million acres today. And so we've really had a great recovery in our forests over time. Our forests are actually growing about two and a half times more wood than we harvest and that dies naturally combined. And so we could actually harvest more trees in our forests and still have a healthy forest that's providing sustainable reusable products all the time. And it's actually a good thing to harvest trees in many cases. So a forest that becomes crowded is going to have trees die naturally. If we can take some of those trees out and thin that forest, we can make the remaining trees healthier, allow them to grow faster, and then we can utilize those wood products. And as we mentioned, those wood products are storing carbon, they're renewable, they're recyclable, and because we're growing more wood than we're harvesting annually, they're sustainable. And so you can feel really good about utilizing wood from Indiana forests.